name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Our Lady of Good Success. Pray for us. Our Lady of Guadalupe. Pray for us. Our Lady of Fatima. Pray for us. Mary, Flame of Love. Pray for us. Good Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint John Paul. Pray for us. All of you saints and angels. Pray for us. Angels of God, our guardians here. God's love is us here. Ever to stay in the Atlantic side. Divine assistance remain always with us. Friends, let's pray now the unity prayer. It's on your card, but you can also pray it after me, line by line. And I want to get you in the habit of saying this prayer uh, because we're living in very dark and I would say dangerous times. Is it true? Yes. And I believe you know it, uh, it's been prophesied that it's going to get worse. They're already, as you probably know, forgive me for, I, I've got to be real. Is it okay to be real with you? Yes. You know, I can't be like a cute, fancy priest. I have to be real. Is that all right? Yes. Okay. You know they've already released another virus in North Africa. It's called the Marburg virus. That's the one they have planned to unleash on us soon. Just so you know, that's been the plan all along. So we want to pray that we are protected from any more of these man-made viruses. Amen? Amen. There is an agenda here. Is it true? Yes. There's an agenda to destroy the country, to destroy the Catholic Church. That's what's going on. And to enslave all of us. And the viruses are part of their plan. Just be aware of that. So are the vaccines, by the way. Amen? Amen. I work with many doctors. They all agree. The doctors I work with all have doctors, but they go to Mass every day. Those are the ones I trust. Amen? Amen. The doctors who have their degrees but also receive Jesus every day. I work with them. Beloved, we need super protection. Amen? Amen? Now, I think it's kind of fun, to be honest with you, to be in a good battle. We're all warriors. Every man here is John the Baptist. Every woman is Joan of Arc. Amen? Amen. We are warriors. We're not wimps or wussies. Amen? Amen. And God has given us the tools we need to be protected from what's coming. We will be protected. Amen? Amen. I can feel the devil crowding at me right now. He didn't like this. It's too bad, though. So when we say this prayer, I want to encourage you, beloved, uh, to say it. I say the minimum is four times a day, I believe. Morning, noon, afternoon, like five, and bedtime. But, you know, forgive me for saying this. Maybe California needs it eight times a day. <laughs> I'm not sure. I just want to pick it up on something. Maybe California needs it eight times a day. Maybe 12. I think priests and nuns say it 12 times a day or more. This prayer literally blinds and paralyzes the evil spirits. I just taught it to an exorcist in London, in England, last week. I flew out of London. He texted me the next day, Father, a woman came to me with a demon, extremely serious. A, a curse was put on her. I taught her the prayer you taught me. She was released in front of my eyes. Another exorcist over in England. Amen? Amen? This is the prayer we gave you. You each owe me one million dollars. <laughs> but I'll be glad to say one Hail Mary instead. Amen? Amen? So let's say it now, and you can say it after me. I'm getting the Holy Spirit goosebumps right now. It's that powerful. It is the weapon for our time. With the Mass and with the Rosary come the flame of love prayers. Amen? Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. and now we're going to bind and paralyze every demonic power coming at us right now, including witchcraft. My adorable Jesus, 
They are feet journey together. They are feet journey together. They are hands gather in unity. They are hands gather in unity. They are hearts beat in unison. They are hearts beat in unison. They are souls be in harmony. They are souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together. May our lips pray together. To gain mercy from the Eternal Father. To gain mercy from the Eternal Father. All the prayer, if you say this after me, this is for the whole world to be protected. The first one that we just said is for you and your family. When you say it, your family is also protected. The second one is for the entire world. This is to bring the great warning, the great illumination of consciences. This prayer will bring it sooner. If you would say this after me, O blessed lady, O blessed lady, spread the effect of grace, spread the effect of grace, of thy fame above, of thy fame above. Over all, of humanity. Over all of humanity. Now, one more time. O blessed lady, o blessed lady spread, the grace, spread the effect of grace of thy fame of love over all of humanity. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, brothers and sisters. So beloved, during Holy Mass, we talked a little bit about Our Lady of Good Success in Quito, Ecuador, and the Saint Venerable Mariana Torres. By the way, she died three times during her life, and one time, the second time she died, she was in the coffin in the church. The bishop was there to say the Mass. They started the funeral Mass, and she sat up. <laughs> you never saw a coffin church in be so fast in your life. They all could have won gold medals that day in the Olympics. Woo, they were gone. The bishop was there like frozen. The bishop was. She died three times. Isn't that amazing? We need such miracles in California. Amen. We need miracles in Bishop Walter J. Sheen, who's venerable Bishop Sheen, who will be blessed soon. Venerable Bishop Sheen said that miracles are a mark of the true church. So don't look down upon miracles. Beloved, without miracles, the church never would have grown. In the first century, it was because of all the miracles that people came into the church. Amen? Amen. Now we need them again, don't we? Yes. Would you raise your right hand to God, everyone in the Holy Church? Would you say this after me? Oh, beautiful God. Oh, beautiful God. We love you. We love you. We need you. We need you. California needs you. California needs you. Please work miracles. Please work miracles. Work miracles through my hands. Save my family. Save my country. Save California. Make yourself known. Almighty God. Prince of Peace. Wonder Counselor. Father forever. Amen. I'd like to add this, you're my only Superman. <laughs> that lies on the Bible, I just made that one up. <laughs> Isn't he great? Isn't he Superman? Yes. But Padre Pio would fly in the air, right? And you know, I brought his robe with me today, Padre Pio's robe. So if you'd like to, beloved, we'll have a healing service after lunch. And I'm going to ask Father to hold the robe, and you can touch the robe of Padre Pio. Okay? We'll take it out of the package, but. We have so many people, you can't linger too long, and like for a second, you know what I mean? Just tell me what you need, and then I'm going to touch you with a relic of the true cross, okay? I was in Lithuania, you know, a few months ago. There was a funny situation, and after one of the talks, uh, there was an old man near the front, and he looked kind of like a grouch. So I went up to him, like to cheer him up, you know? Because, you know, grouchiness is kind of a sin, you know that, don't you? That there be no grouches in the Church of California, amen? No grouches. So I thought he was a grouch, so I went up to him to shake his hand and cheer him up, and he wouldn't shake my hand. 
But then it turned out that his wife said she spoke English. His wife was Lithuanian. She spoke English. She said, Father, he's blind. Oh. Boy, was I embarrassed. <laughs> he's not a grouch, he's just blind. You know, they like, when you're blind, you have like a funny look on your face, you know? So I didn't realize that. I thought he was like miserable. I was going to try to make a joke with him and cheer him up. It turns out he was blind. It's, oh, okay. Can I touch his eyes with my cross? Yes, Father. So I reached over to the old gentleman. I'll use you as an example, okay? <laughs> you're, you're prettier than he was, though. <laughs> I, I, I touched his eyes like this. Just like that. It was time for lunch. It was a lunch break, so we all broke for lunch. When I came back from the next talk after lunch, which we'll do shortly, one of my helpers said, Father, you know the old man who was blind? I said, yes. You touched his eyes? Oh, yes. He's beginning to see. Oh. So then I told, I told the family, I said, tell the family, stay to the end of the conference, because we'll have a cleaning service. I will touch his eyes again. Does that sound familiar? Yes. You know your Catholic Bible, it sounds familiar, doesn't it? The blind man that Jesus blessed once, he began to see, right? He saw people look like trees. Then the Lord said, well, let's do it again. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. <laughs> now, the Lord was trying to give us an example of patience, right? And also that healing comes by degrees, right? So he stayed for the healing service, touched the book of the field, I touched his eyes again, and I got a call the next day from his wife. He's now seeing the 2020 vision. Oh. Amen. So we fully expect our best friend and our savior to do miracles today. He loves you like he loves Lithuania. Amen. Amen. So we expect miracles today. We thought that we'll touch you with the cross and the robe of Hagridio. But let me go back to our video of good success just for a moment here. When Mariana Torres, whose body they allowed me to touch, when she asked the Virgin, Mama, what feast day shall we need to honor you in some way? Mary said, no, just honor me of the Feast of Candlemas. I don't want a special feast day. The Feast of Candlemas. Yes, that's for very second. So she said yes, and began to honor her in Ecuador hundreds of years ago of the Feast of Candlemas. They still do today. So about four in the morning, they have a procession at four in the morning, and hundreds of thousands of people come out with candles on that day, on the Feast of Candlemas, for the presentation. Well, what's interesting is you fast forward to Hungary, to Budapest. I was just in Budapest three weeks ago, two weeks ago. And Budapest is where the flame of love movement came from, you see? And he visited Kindleman, is a beautiful holy lay woman that God used to give these revelations, to give these prayers, which will bring the victory of God to the world. Amen? Amen. The prayers we give you will save the world. Here's what's so interesting about the link between the two. The old revelation, the piece of Kindleman has, are really good success. Hundreds of years later, Mama and our Lord began speaking to the visited Kindleman in Hungary to give her the flame of love and some special prayers. And Elizabeth asked our lady, she didn't know anything about Kito, she knew nothing about that. She asked our lady, well, what feast day should we have for this? And Mama said, I don't want a special feast day, just on me with the feast of the presentation. What day is that? It's the same day. Now, do you, do you see what's happening there? That's called a God wink, right? Or a Mary wink. That's a Mary wink. The same day, she said the same thing. I don't want a special feast day. Army on the Feast of Canada, that's the candles. She says to the Feast of Canada, I don't want a special feast day. Army on the Feast of the Presentation. It's the same day. In other words, California, the victory that was promised in Quito, Ecuador, will be fulfilled by the prayers that come from Budapest, Hungary. You see? That's why they're related by the same day. The Lord says that those who have eyes to see, let them see. Those who have ears to hear, let them hear. Amen? Amen. So the victory was prophesied, celebrated on February 2. The prayers are given now in Hungary in our time, celebrated on February 2. That's not a coincidence. Amen? Amen? So you have the prayers that will bring the victory. The unity prayer we just did. And now the little insert prayer for all of humanity. So I want to teach you one thing about that prayer. is to be inserted in the Hail Mary. You don't have to, but Mama's asking us to. 
So this is how we do it. It has the imprimatur. We didn't make this up. It has the, I've met with Cardinal Ergo just a week ago. That's the Cardinal in Budapest who gave the imprimatur. It's completely approved. But we would say in your Hail Mary, after the word sinners, that little prayer. So we would say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. That's the only thing. You don't change the Hail Mary, you insert that into the Hail Mary. Now, I'll tell you why this makes sense to me as a Catholic priest. Father Mary knows this already, of course. The Hail Mary's already, already been changed three other times. And so they say, oh, don't you dare change my Hail Mary. Guess what? When the Hail Mary was first given to us, it did not include even the name of Jesus. The original Hail Mary goes like this. The original Hail Mary, that we said for hundreds of years, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Amen. That was the Hail Mary. Then the saints said to the Holy Father, we need to add something to this. We need to add the holy name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. The name of every other name. So the Pope changed it at the request of the saints. So they began adding, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Amen. That was the Hail Mary. You see how it changed? Then the church father said, we need something more. A couple hundred years later, and they added what you know. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. That's Hail Mary 3.0. <laughs> now we have, in the time of nuclear bombs, the time of the Ukraine, the time of diseases and vaccines, and the time, forgive me, of the Antichrist. Now we have a Hail Mary that's ready for anything. Amen? Amen. It's no longer a grenade or a nuclear bomb. Now it's a uranium bomb. Amen? Amen? And so it makes sense to me. We have Hail Mary 4.0. John Paul said before he died, California, we're living in the greatest battle between light and darkness since the fall of Adam. John Paul said that. So we, now we need the greatest prayer since the fall of Adam. Amen? Amen. We want to encourage you, when we come back for our giving service, we'll say a day of the rosary together. We want to learn to say that prayer because that prayer will bring about the full victory to the world, including beginning with the great morning, the illumination of consciences, where every man, woman, and child in the entire world will receive this revelation, everyone, including Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, and everyone who works for CNN. <laughs> everyone will receive this revelation. I should add everybody who works in the White House, too. Everyone will know this. First, there is a God. There will be no more atheists in the world. Everyone will know there is a God. Secondly, everyone will know that Jesus Christ, his Son, is the one Lord and Savior of the world. Everyone will know that. Everyone. 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 You say it. Everyone. Everyone. Everyone will know. Everyone everyone will know. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Does it sound biblical? Yes. It is biblical. Amen. Everyone will know there's a God, that Jesus is Lord, and also that Jesus the Lord founded one and only one church. Everyone will know this. We'll know there's only one church with seven sacraments. Amen? Amen. And lastly, everyone in the world will know where they stand, where we stand before God. Whether at that moment, if I were to die, would I go to heaven, to purgatory, or to hell? Everyone will know exactly where we stand. We'll be given a little bit of time, several prophets think it's six weeks, for everyone to process that and make a decision. Whether to go receive baptism if you're never baptized, or if you are baptized, to go to Holy Confession. They say the priest will be working day and night. So have mercy for us, please. <laughs> and bring me two different sandwiches to keep me going. Okay? With a little bit of cheese on it as well. 
Isn't that a marvelous gift? And be aware of this, that gift called the Great Morning, or it's also called the Illumination of Consciences. There's a movie coming out, by the way, on this soon. It's coming out, so I'll be meeting with the producer next week. It's coming out very soon. Beloved, this is this for everybody in the whole world. Amen? Amen? It was won for us by our sweet Savior on the cross. It's not in addition to your redemption. It was won at Calvary, this gift. Amen? Amen. And so we'll say one more again, Mary, but we'll insert now the new prayer for the second love. We'll insert that into Hail Mary. This time Mary said, God will bring that great morning as soon as possible, even within the year. Is that okay? Yes. I think we need it, don't you? Yes. We need this desperately. God thought of it, but his ideas are always wonderful. Let's pray now that it will come as soon as possible. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now, spread the effect of grace of thy flame of love over all of humanity. Now, in the hour of our death, amen. 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 Now, I could talk all of the names, so I'm going to shut right now. Because I, we have a whole year priest with us today, St. Father Michael Berry. And I love him, don't you? Yes. I'm going to call him to teach you something as well.